This video is how to use HitFilm Express in 2021 to edit your video games or videos for beginners. This video is for those of you who aren't familiar with video editing or are trying to figure out how to get started with HitFilm Express in 2021. Or maybe you're just new to editing altogether and are wondering if HitFilm Express is easy to use. HitFilm Express is free and you can get it without watermarks legally. And if you want to know how, then after you're done watching this video, you can click on the link I'll put at the end of the video on the upper left that you can click on to find out how to get it easily and install it. For this video about how to use HitFilm Express in 2021 to edit your video games or videos for beginners, I will show you how to get your video into HitFilm Express so that it can be edited. I will show you simple editing processes I will show you how to adjust your volume levels with audio if it's included in the video. I will also show you some basic hit film tools and how to finish your video so that it can be uploaded to YouTube or Facebook or watched on a cell phone or another computer. So you start up HitFilm Express and on the main screen on the left you have something called add-on packs and it's a nice way for HitFilm Express to make some money and they're great if you want to begin doing more advanced projects or advanced editing and they also have other tutorials you can click on as you get going and that's to the right of the add-on packs you can scroll through those next I have a video clip I want to use for demonstration so I can show you how this works and in this case I'll just be using one video and before we get going I also want to mention that there is something called hotkeys or shortcuts that you can use to speed up your workflow but for this video I'll just be using my mouse to click on the areas so you can see what I'm doing. So if you look at the upper left hand corner of my screen, you can click on File and click on New. Or you can just click over here where it says New. And this opens up New Project Settings. Since this video is for beginners, I'm leaving everything as it was when I first installed it, so it's not confusing. So I won't be adjusting any of these settings. And this should work out okay for most video projects. So we can just click OK at the bottom left hand or bottom right hand side of the screen. So this opens up another screen. And on the upper left you have something called a trimmer. To the right or about halfway across the top you have an area called the viewer. And I'll click on that. And on the bottom left you have an area with a tab labeled media and controls and import. To the right of these tabs you have editor and the way over to the right you have export and then you have an audio mixer. Now that you've seen some of the basic layout I'm going to add a movie video clip to HitFilm Express for our basic HitFilm tutorial. This is for 2021 but if you got HitFilm Express in 2020 or 2019 and are just getting around to using it that's okay. This video will still show you how to get started. There are a couple of ways you can get media or your videos into HitFilm Express. You can come down here to the bottom under media. You can click on this or you can go to the upper left hand side of the screen. Click on file. Go down to import. Follow the arrow to the right over to media and left click on it. They both do the same thing. So I'll left click on media. Now it brings me to a folder where I have a video file. And hopefully you'll know where your video is stored on your computer so that you can find the one that has your video or video clip. So you open your folder and select the video gaming or the video. Left double click on it and then it shows up in this area called the trimmer. And I have a silly expression on my face. But you can also see that down on the bottom left under media and import we have the same image. And this is actually where the video clip went to. Next you want to left click on your video clip hold it and drag it over to the editor. And if you get the message that the editor sequence settings differ to the clip, go ahead and hit yes to change the sequence settings to match the clip. For this video, I'm not going to go into matching video and editor settings. In many instances, things will still work out okay for you, as long as you don't save over your original video. Any issues you might have can be addressed and fixed in another video. I want to keep this video basic. So I'll move on, and if you're finding this video helpful so far, please give it a like. Thank you. I want you to remember that if you do make a mistake, you can always click on the edit at the top of HitFilm Express, right here, and left click on the undo button, and this will take you back a step. And you can keep clicking on it, undoing each edit that was done until your undone section that you wanted undone is fixed. And I also recommend you save frequently so you can go back to another part of your editing 
if you accidentally change something early in the project, it's an easy way to go back without having to redo a lot of your work. You can see in my video editor down below here, that to the left of the video, you have the word video and audio. So the audio and the video in my clip are separated. And I can left click with a mouse on this thin white line to move the sound volume up and down. So you just hold on it and you can go like that and move it up and down. That will increase or decrease or make it louder or softer, however you want it. I also recommend editing with headphones because if you make videos for a platform like YouTube, it can really help you hear the background and listen for other sounds that a viewer might find irritating. This clip is pretty small, but for my recording software, I'll be leaving it at this size. Normally, it's a good idea to go to the edges and you can left click on it and see how the pointer changes to two arrows pointing both left, well points, you can only see one side of it, but it points both left and right on both sides. If you hold down your left mouse button, you can slide that across and also move it, do the same thing at the top, and you can make everything bigger so it's easier to work with. It also helps when you're working with your video in HitFilm Express. You remember that you have these, and these are, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's a little mountain and a big mountain, and when I click on it, it zooms in if you click on the bigger mountain. You can also left click on a little dot right here and you can just slide it back and forth. But you'll find this feature very useful as you get started. Zoom in, get closer to the action, and zoom out. And one trick is as you start to edit, it's always a good idea when you're looking at your video, you have this, and these are called waveforms, and this is a break in your audio. So help stop you from breaking or splitting maybe a word or a phrase unintentionally. This will help you to speed up your editing. The audio and video will normally match, or the audio will be synchronized or linked with your video. And later I'll do another video showing using multiple video and audio clips. But since this HitFilm Express in 2021 video is for beginners, I want to keep it simple. Now that you're zoomed in and ready to edit, I recommend going to the top right half of HitFilm Express and clicking on Viewer if you haven't. So if it's if you're seeing this, you want to switch over to Viewer, and you left click on that. So what you're seeing here is this video up here will match what you have down in the timeline and where you're working in your timeline. That'll make a little bit more sense in a minute. And for this video, don't worry about the fact that you have an image on the left side here over in trimming or over in the trimmer area. We're only going to pay attention to the upper right side of the video image where the video is in the editor timeline down here. Now I can select the little play button here right in the middle and just below the viewer section. Now let's say I wanted to remove this first section where I'm talking. I can zoom in a little closer in the timeline and I can scroll a little further along in the video till I get to a break. So right there is a good place. I was a li little close. I could have zoomed out a little bit to make that a little quicker. This will make it a little easier for me to select just the right spot so I don't cut off a word or phrase halfway through. To see in the waveform, I have a break. I know I'm not saying anything right here. I can listen for it too, but just visually I can see that. So it makes it a little bit quicker when I'm finding a spot. Believe me, you'll use this a lot. Now I want to move my pointer to the left where it says editor, and there's a column here that has different tools that you use when you're editing. And so with my mouse, I want to left click on this. It's below the hand. This is actually an image of a slice tool or a razor blade where I left click on it and then come over to the timeline and I click on that. Now see how both of these change color? The audio and video are linked together. And so when I make a cut here, it also cuts the audio. And the same, same below, if I click down here, it would also cut the video section. So when I work on it, both of these pieces will be edited together so they match. Now I can simply remove the first part where I was speaking. Until you get used to working with these tools, I recommend after you make your cut, going back to the editor and click on one of the selection tools here. That way you don't accidentally slice multiple spots in your video until you're ready or until you're used to working with it. Then I just move my mouse pointer back over here and I right click over the clip I want to remove. And you can do other things like move this clip to another part of the video because this is for beginners. So what I want to select is ripple delete object. I'm right on it right here. So I left click on that and that just removed that first part of this video and it also moved the entire video back to the beginning of the timeline. 
So when I took it out, it automatically pulled everything to the left. So that we're starting back at the beginning again, if that makes sense. If I didn't do that, I would have a big blank spot in my video and it would be as long as the section that I just cut out. And that's something you won't want to have to go back and fix later. There, now that's gone. You can also remove sections of video, which is something you will definitely do a lot of as you get into editing your videos. But I'll just remove a couple sections throughout the video so you can see it. And when you're moving around your video, I have another little tip. You have something called a playhead in HitFilm Express in 2021. And it's a little vertical bar at the top of the HitFilm Express timeline. And if you left click on it and hold your mouse over it, you can move the playhead to different areas of your video. Another way you can move around the video on your timeline, look over to the left by this little clock. And as I move this playhead around, see how that time changes? Well, if you have a very long video, like uh, say in an hour, or more. A lot of times I'll have an hour long video that I need to edit to get a good five to ten minutes out of it. So this can be helpful. Let's say I need to go to a section that's a minute further on in this video. And just add a one there. Go like that. And boom. It brings me right through that section. And if you have a great memory, that can be very useful. But I don't. So I use the playhead and I zoom in and out a lot. And that's an effective way to move around your timeline quickly. And you can, of course, do what you prefer. You'll probably do a combination of those things to move around your timeline. So when I bring a video clip or a video over to my timeline, I always like to start at the beginning. And one more quick thing, hotkeys and shortcuts are very useful. So it won't be long before you start using those because it saves a lot of time. But if I was playing this, I let it go along till I find a spot. It looks like I need to add it. Like if I just wanted to do something with that section, or I'll move further along here. Here I am talking again. Let's just say, for example, I wanted to remove some of this section. So I'll look at my waveform down in the audio. I'll zoom in a little bit, and then I'll go over to my editing toolbar, click on the little razor blade again, and I'll look at my waveform. I see that there's a gap there, and I'm going to left click out of there and see how the line went all the way to the top again. And then I'm going to come over to this gap, I'll just click there. This time I click up in the video section. You can see it affected both sections when I clicked on it. Go back to the pointer. It's good practice for you until you're used to it. And then I right click and then I want to click ripple delete object. Before I do that, I'll just show you what happens if I just hit cut. Then I have a gap here or a gray bar. So if I was playing this video and I finished it, go like that. Then I have this big open wide space, black space in my video, and we don't want that in our videos. So I can right click again in this blank space, hit ripple delete gap, and it closed that gap in the video. So it just comes together like that. So those two sections were brought together and I can continue on. Now let's say I want to adjust some audio. Maybe there's some background noise, but I don't want to remove the volume completely. Let's say it was in this section here. I'll go ahead and go over to my toolbar, hit that blade tool and let just pretend we had an issue right in here. Well, then I can slice this section, go back to the pointer, and do you see how I got a double arrow there? As I highlighted over this little thin white line in the middle of the video. Well, I can move that up and down, and what that will do, it will change the audio levels. So watch. I'll go to the section just before that. See how the audio drop? And then it picks back up on the other side here. But I could just drop the audio down in this section, or I could move it up. Maybe Maybe I forgot and looked at something while I was talking and the volume dropped while I went through here. Well, I could raise that volume level up a little bit so you could hear the video better and so it wouldn't be quite as distracting. Another thing I could have done when I brought my video into the timeline, I could have just changed the audio volume on the whole video by grabbing this and sliding it up and down. Since I have cuts in the video, it will change at different levels. Like I could move it up and down in each section if I wanted to. And you'll find later on as you start adding music, maybe you start li adding live video to uh, things that you record on your computer, you'll have different volume levels. So this is an area where something like this, where it is really useful. I use this a lot because you don't want to have a lot of big swings in your audio. A little bit's not too distracting, but when you have extreme changes, it gets irritating to your viewers. Now that you've seen that, and we've made a couple little edits, it's a good idea to go ahead and save, like I mentioned at the beginning, or I think I mentioned that. So you go up to the upper left-hand side of HitFilm Express, click on File, 
and you want to go save as and I brought up a folder here normally I keep this clean so I'll clean it out after I'm done with a project I oftentimes I'll keep a master backup uh, that's kind of a whole different thing though that's more about organizing your files and stuff and I wanted to keep this simple I usually keep one master file of an entire project in case I have to go back and make a minor change later. But for now, for this particular video, I was reviewing a set of headphones, so I might just go headphones one. I just keep it simple and I'll save it. Now I have a backup copy of all the changes that were made to this video right now. And each time I save, I like to rename it. Now just do one, two, three, and so on. That way, if I realize I forgot to do something, I can go back and make a change and it's just better to be able to pick up at a different point instead of using this edit undo button. I mean this is effective and it's fine if you're only a couple moves back but when you're like a hundred if you, you really screwed up have something that was a hundred edits ago you don't want to use this because you'll have to go back and redo all your work so it's a good idea to save and sometimes there are failures with saves you'll save a project and it didn't take for some reason. Maybe you didn't wait long enough, got impatient, or your computer glitches. So it's definitely a good idea to have multiple saves as you work. Trust me, <laughs> if you don't take much away from this video, that's something that no matter what program you use, you definitely want to do that. But keep your labeling simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Now, when you finish editing your video, you've gone through and you've cut out the different sections, and but you're, you're satisfied with where you think it should be. I always recommend you go back to the beginning of it, leave it in your editor, and then play it all the way through on the viewer just to make sure everything is how you want it. And that includes your volume and video footage because you'll find you might have forgotten to cut out a clip of you eating something no one should ever see or something's hanging off your nose or whatever. But now that we're satisfied, I want to tell you this is how I like to do this. Other people like to use something called an in and out on the timeline. And I don't want to confuse you. And I'm not going to show how that works. But what works best for me, here I'll zoom out to the end of the clip. What works best for me is I'll go to the video. You can be outside of the video clip or on it. But right click and you want to click on this where it says set to contents. So click on that. I don't know if you noticed or not, but this part here went gray. It's a darker gray than this area. What that does is it removed all this dead space that was out here to the right because we don't want that included in our video. If you forget to do that, and sometimes it goes the other way. Sometimes you didn't set the project length up properly and your video will end right here if you don't do that. And later you'll be scratching your head saying, hey, my video is gone. Or you have a bunch of just blank black screen at the end of your video and you don't want that. Okay, now, see where it says export here? Again, we're over on the viewer side of HitFilm Express. We go down to export, click on it, scroll down to export now, and click on the into out area. Now I'm going to pause that for a second. It started automatically. One last thing I'd like to do is just to make sure that talk in that the video length is the proper length. Before you render it, you want to make sure that your time matches up or the duration of the video matches up with what you have here, up here in the export screen where it says duration. Now if you notice that viewer disappeared, the video has gone from up here and it switched to export. If I click on viewer, the video comes back. It'll go back to export. <clears throat> so what happened was I moved everything that we edited down here up to this screen here. And that's just kind of like a staging area for your video. But I always like to double check that the duration for the entire video is the same is what we have here. So as I scroll that playhead, you can zoom in real tight just to make sure we have it right. You see how that moved? It looked like it was at the end, but then when I moved it went even further out. So I can check it there. And if you have trouble reading this timeline and you want to get it even tighter, look back over here underneath where it says editor. You can see it gives me the exact time. And so you want that to match up. Okay, it looks like Everything that we have in the video, including the audio waveform, goes right up to the end on this clip. So I'm not losing anything. This is a really close match for this. And so that tells me we're okay. We're good. Otherwise, you can spend the time rendering it. If you have a slow computer, it can be a real hassle because you'll have to go back and if you're missing something. Maybe you didn't set the contents properly or you forgot to do that. That happens sometimes. You just get busy. And I have to say, if you left your presets as they were when you started your project, you shouldn't need to change anything in these presets up here. But for a beginner, you should 
be able to just leave this alone and everything should work out okay for you. So our time and duration matches up with what we had down in our editor timeline and we can go ahead and export it. Now basically what this is doing, it's called exporting or rendering, but it is taking all those clips and all the adjustments we made and it's combining it all into one file so that when you play it, it will run together seamlessly or it will run together because right now in the editor, those are all a bunch of different clips that you went through and changed because you made cuts and slices and different adjustments. So these are all separate segments. When you're exporting it now, it's going to put that all together so that it's all one file. Once it's finished, you can left click on the folder where it said output there. Make sure you can see that. So I left click right there. It opened the folder where it exported to. And that lets you get to your newly rendered or exported video quickly. And now it's ready to upload or watch. Make sure you subscribe and check out my other video tips on HitFilm Express or some of my product reviews in my playlist. And now you know how to begin using HitFilm Express in 2021 to edit your video games or videos for beginners.